Hi everyone, it's Miss Pat again, and I'm so glad to see you back on Read Me a Story. Today we're going to read some stories about Thanksgiving and a little bit about fall. And if you remember last time, it's hard to remember that long ago, but I told you I would read you a story about a scarecrow. I can't wait to see what's in here. And this is a story, it's about a scarecrow. It's a story and a poem. Wait till you see what a poem is. Beth Ferry wrote the words and the Fan Brothers drew the pictures. And look at all the pages. Here's the title page, here we go. Autumn sunshine, haystacks rolled, scarecrow guards the fields of gold. See how it rhymes? That's what makes it a poem. And the way we hear the words. No one enters, no one dares. Scarecrow stands alone and scares. The fox, the deer, the mice, the crows. It's all he does. It's all he knows. See how the animals are over here and they're scared of the scarecrow. He never rests, he never bends, he never had a single friend. Oh, that's sad, for all the woodland creatures know not to mess with the old scarecrow. He looks kind of lonely. The winter whispers, velvet snow, scarecrow has no place to go. He dreams of what the spring will bring, of buds and blooms and things that sing. Then something drops from midair. I wonder what it is. I think it's this. A small scared crow lying there. Broken nest? Broken wing? Scarecrow does the strangest thing. He snaps his pole, he bends down low, and saves the tiny baby crow. Oh, look, he's smiling and he's helping the crow. He tucks him near his heart of hay. He lets him sleep. He lets him stay. He doesn't stop to wonder why. He sings the sweetest lullaby. Oh, he's going to sing. Safe and warm, the nestling men's. The two make the oddest friends. But friends they are right from the start. The crow will grow in Scarecrow's heart. There he is. And he will peek out at the farm and he will perch on Scarecrow's arm. And they will laugh and wish on stars, forgetting who they really are. Have you ever wished on a star? For crows are birds and birds must fly. The fledgling spreads his wings to try. A fledgling is a, is a baby crow. He dips and soars and calls out loud. Scarecrow cheers, pleased and proud, but he watches. Scarecrow knows that he must stay and crow must go. He's looking over his farm barns here and the crow. Summer sunshine. Ooh, autumn chill. I can see the leaves. Remember autumn and fall are the same. Snowflakes make it colder still. No one visit, no one cares. Scarecrow sags alone and scared and stares. Oh, I feel bad for our scarecrow friend. He looks so sad. He misses his friend. Broken heart, broken pole, nothing fills the empty hole. He's so very, very sad. I hope things get better. 
Something's happening that's good. Then something drops from midair, a large black crow just standing there. Look at him. Hey, there's a ladybug and another couple bugs and an inchworm. There's a lot to look at at this page. Scarecrow's arms are open wide. Crow spreads his wings and swoops inside. Look at him smiley, so happy to see his friend again. Joyful hearts brimming whole. A friend will mend a broken pole. And he will spruce up matted hay. And he will say, I'm here to stay. Oh, look. He's so happy to see his friend. Winter's over, springtime's due. Is there room enough for two? Oh no, there's one, two crows. Flowers blooming, fields of green. Five small eggs are tucked unseen. Is there five eggs? Three, four, five. There is five eggs. Scarecrow guards them, for he knows that soon they will be baby crows. <gasps> he was right. Look at it. They're baby crows. Aww. And he will love them from the start, and they will grow up in his heart. Look at them. They're sitting on his hat and on his arm, just like their mom and dad did. Oh, that's so nice. And they peep and perch and play and make him happy every day. And as the seasons come and go, they will love their dear scarecrow. So happy as when the birds are flying and there's fledglings and little birds. Oh, and the other animals came to see him too. This story had a very happy ending. The end. And there's the farm. Hi everyone, guess what? I saw this book and it has a cow with a hat on. I never saw a cat, cow with a hat on. I had to read what this story about. The name of the book is called Pumpkin Time. Let's see. what the story about. I did? Usually is about. Oh. I'm not going to like that. No. That's going to piss me off. Yeah. And you too. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, all right, try again. All right, three, two. Hi, everyone. I had to choose this story to read to you. It's called Pumpkin Time, but the reason I picked it is there's a cow with a hat on, and there's a turkey with boots on, and a ginormous pumpkin. I have to read what's going on in this story. This story is called Pumpkin Time, and it's written by Erzy Deek, and the pictures are by Doug Cushman. Look at how many people have read this story. It must be a good story. I can't wait to read it. Pumpkin Time. Oh, look. She has a wheelbarrow, and it has all these things in it. Okay. The day that Evie wore her gardening boots and planted big seeds and little seeds in the soft black earth, she saw a feast waiting to sprout. Wait, a feast? I think a feast is a meal. Look at the turkeys looking at the seedlings. And so is Evie. This must be Evie. <laughs> Here's the cow with the hat. The day the cow strolled down Main Street in fancy hats, Evie didn't even notice. What was Evie doing? Where is Evie? Oh, she's right there. Oh, she's reading a story and she's carrying something. I think it's dirt. The day the donkey sailed through the sky, Evie didn't even blink an eye. Look at, there are those donkeys in the air. <laughs> I never saw that kind of thing before. 
What was Evie doing? Oh, she was raking in her garden. Look at the turkey. The turkey's saying, what is going on? The day the chickens flew the coop like feather dusters in the wind. <laughs> Look at, they all jumped out of their coop, which looks like a pumpkin. Evie didn't even sneeze. What was Evie doing now? What is she doing? I think she might be picking up weeds, getting them out of her garden. Oh my gosh, can you see what's happening here? There are pigs in dresses dancing around a maypole. The day the pigs danced around and around and around the maypole, Evie didn't even sque squeal. What was she doing? Oh, look what she's doing. She's working in her garden again. Even the turkey is dancing. The day the sheep picnic on the neighbor's lawn, Evie didn't see a thing. Look what they're doing. What was Evie doing? She's making a scarecrow, just like the one we just saw in the book. The other book. Look at the, the, the sheep is going to eat grass on a hot dog bun. And the turkey's eating a grass sandwich. Did you ever eat a grass sandwich? The day it snowed buckets in July. <laughs> oh my gosh, it isn't snow, it's snowing buckets. Evie didn't even wonder why. What was Evie doing? Oh look, she's picking up something. Looks like snails. Oh no, the her scarecrow got a bucket on his head. The day the chickens, rabbits, and pigs played badminton, Evie didn't feel a thing. What was Evie doing? Oh, looks like she's going to her garden with some dirt or something. Oh no, look at, they're all playing badminton. Did you ever play badminton? It's a game where you use these rackets and you try to get stuff over the net. Oh, look, there's cheerleaders that have pumpkins on. The day autumn blew in with woolly sweaters and pulled the rug out from under summer, Evie didn't rake. What was Evie doing? Oh, she's doing something over here. You see that? I think she's measuring that pumpkin. Look at even the crow has a sweater on. That Evie, I wonder what she's doing. The day that cows, chickens, rabbits, and pigs stomped grapes, Evie forgot to take off her socks. What was Evie doing? Look at, she has a whole wheelbarrow full of, oh, you know what this is called? Grape juice. Oh, I love grape juice, it's so delicious. Look at the cows and the pigs and the turkey and the, there's a duck and the rabbit. Because <laughs> even the crow has a purple face. They were smushing the smushing grapes and making grape juice. The day ghosts and goblins danced door to door all night long, Evie wasn't scared. What was she doing? Looks like she's carrying something. Looks like a bunch of vegetables, maybe a squash and an apple. Look at, there's a, the cow has another hat on. This time the cow is dressed up like a witch. Oh, and the lamb is dressed up like a, a vampire. And the bunny is a ghost, but I can tell it's the bunny because of his ears. All right, I wonder what's gonna happen now. The day everyone gathered around the harvest table, Evie didn't notice. What was Evie doing? Oh, look, she's checking the stove. She, there's their boots. That's what Evie was doing. Oh my gosh, look at, everybody has their tongues out. They're saying this is gonna be so good. It looks like a, 
It looks like a pumpkin pie. I wonder what it is. Do you wonder? They were, they were celebrating the feast and having pumpkin pie. Oh my gosh. The donkey has a hat on this time. The end. The name of this story is Around the Table that Granddad Built. Did your granddad ever build a table? Or your grandpa? I gotta see what happens. Around the Table that Granddad Built. Melanie Heiser Hill wrote the words and Jamie Kim drew the pictures. It looks like there it looks like there's some flowers. We gotta see what's happening. This is the table that Granddad built. I think this is Granddad. There's Mom and Dad and and their kids. Look at how happy Mom looks. These are the sunflowers picked by my cousin, set on the table that Granddad built. Look, they picked these beautiful flowers and they're gonna put them on the table. These are the napkins sewn by mom surrounding the sunflower picked by my cousins set on the table that granddad built. This story repeats itself. I can hear it. Look, they're folding the napkins. These are the plates, red, orange, and yellow red, orange, and yellow that go with the napkins sewn by mom surrounding the sunflowers picked by my cousin set on the table that granddad built. Oh sure, I see the plate and the napkin and the flower and the table. These are the glasses from mom and dad's wedding. Oh my gosh, they must be so special. Sorry, I moved. These are the glasses from mom and dad's wedding. Oh my goodness, they're way up on the shelf. These must be so special. And their aunt is helping. Oh no, look at mom's face. She's very worried. Set by the plates, red, orange, and yellow, that go with the napkins surrounding the sunflowers, picked by my cousin, set on the table that Granddad built. Oh my gosh, Mom looks pretty worried that she's going to drop those glasses. Oh, she didn't. I'm feeling so much better. These are the forks, spoons, and knives, gifts from Dad's grandma long, long ago. I wonder where they're getting them from. Placed by the glasses from Mom and Dad's wedding, set by the plates, red, orange, and yellow, that go with the napkins sewn by Mom, surrounding the sunflowers picked by my cousin set on the table that granddad built. Oh, yum. Look at this. Doesn't this look like a great feast? Oh, no, they're touching the food. This is the squash that took over our garden. And these are potatoes and peppers we roasted. And these are the beans overflowing the bowl. They look like they're overflowing the bowl. And this is a stack of toasty tamales. Mm. And these are samosas, spicy and hot. And this is the rice pudding we have every year. I think this is the rice pudding. 
the tamales look so wonderful and toasty and and tasty. Mmm. Oh, it looks like she's smelling something with her nose. This is the bread still warm that Grand baked, and this is the butter made by us kids. And this is Dad's huckleberry jam. Mmm. Look at all these M's. Mmm. 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 Did you ever make butter? It's pretty fun. You have to ask your mom to make some butter with you. And here are the pies. I made this one myself. I think she made that one. Look at all these pies. That one has cherries on it and leaves. I never had a leaf pie. These, for these hands we hold for tasty good food, for family and friends, for grace that is given and love that is shared, we give thanks around this table that granddad built. Everybody's having Thanksgiving dinner. I bet you will too. Oh, well, there's only one piece of pie left. The end. I have a book about a cake. And it's about making this cake, but it has, it, it has a truck on it. So how does a truck make a cake? We have to read this story and find out. It's, the name of the book is Who Made This Cake? And it's by Mr. Nagawaga. And it's illustrated by Junji Kawas. Oh man, I think I missed the page. Who made this cake? Oh, hey, wait. There's a little guy over there. He says, all right, leave it to us. Please make a very good one, she says. I wonder if they're going to make the cake. Look at, they're waiting for her out in the car. Here we go. Look at all these little people. And look at all these trucks. Eggs and butter, flour, sugar, and baking powder. Oh, they look at they're in big stacks. And they're scooping it up. Look what our construction vehicles can do. Hey, they're scooping it into the truck, and then the trucks are taking it up to a giant bowl. Look at the eggs. The eggs are on a crane. And look at here's some sugar in the back of that one. In in the back of that dump truck. Look at there's sugar in the back of this dump truck. Any kind of job you can rely on us. This is a giant word. Crash. Oh my gosh, look at. They're using a drill to open the eggs, to put eggs in the bowl to make the cake. And then they're putting them on the back of the truck, the eggshells. Mix well. Oh, look, they're mixing. Pour the mixture in the pan. Oh, they're suctioning it out of one and pouring it into the pan. Man, this is going to be a giant cake if the pan is that big. Load it in the oven. Oh, look, some cranes are gonna put it in the oven. Look at all the people. Everybody's working. Press the button. Let's take a break. Oh, they're taking a break. These guys are resting, and these guys are going to the food truck to get something to eat. It's done. Oh, look. Look at all the people with the flags. They're, they're keeping everyone else away so nobody gets hurt. Mmm, it smells so good. Watch out. Oh, no, look at all the people are moving back. Oh, the cranes are putting the cake 
on the plate. Put whipped cream on it. Oh, look, they're using this kind of truck to put the whipped cream on. And this guy is spreading it evenly. Add some decorations. Oh, they have strawberries in the truck. Oh, and they're cleaning them. And they're lifting them onto the top of the cake. Oh, I wonder why they're decorating it. The finishing touch. Here comes the helicopter. Brr, 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 brr. Oh, they put a sign on it. I'm not sure what the sign says. The job is done. I see what the sign says. And somebody's going to pick it up and carry it. These must be some little tiny people with little tiny trucks that made this cake. <gasps> Happy birthday. Oh, it must be his birthday today. They enjoyed his cake. The end. I'm so glad you could come and read some stories with me today. Read to me is my favorite show. This is what we're going to read next time. It's about a bear who gets sick. Oh, no, this sounds horrible. We'll have to see what happens. See you next time. Hi, my name is W. Ripto. I'm a member of the Addison Township Fire Department. I'm a lieutenant here. I've been here for 13 years. Today, we're going to talk about uh, address signs and having your driver aid properly marked and making sure that when there's an emergency, we're going to get there quickly and safely to help you with your emergency. Here are some things that we need to keep in mind when you mark your driveway and or your mailbox. Uh, in some situations, you may have to mark both, uh, your mailbox and your driveway. Uh, in situations where your driveway uh, is across the street from your mailbox, or if you have a shared driveway where multiple um, houses are on your driveway, you know, or if your driveway splits off into two or three areas, um, wherever it splits, you might want to have an address sign marking what side to go on, whether it's left or right or straight or however you need to do it. Um, it's going to make our job a lot easier to get to you in that state of emergency. A few other things to, to keep in mind is uh, you can have your address sign vertically or you can have it displayed horizontally. We highly suggest that you mark both sides of your address so that uh, whenever we're coming from the north or the south or the east or the west, we can see that driveway uh, on both sides. In our engines, uh, in our ambulances, we have our map books. And in our map books, we have uh, very detailed oriented uh, pictures showing exactly where the addresses are. Um, but having that marked, uh, your address sign marked or your driveway marked will definitely ease us in, in finding your address in that state of emergency. Uh, you can call the station at 248 628-5600 and uh, request uh, to have one filled out uh, or you can come to the station and have one filled out yourself. They're uh, $15 a piece again and uh, it, it's definitely a good thing to have in, for your driveway and for us uh, if we ever need to get there. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Again, my name is W. Ripto with the Addison Township Fire Department. Thank you and have a good day.